On the roof here at 2263 Wyndham Drive in Melbourne, uh, Joseph Lentini, he asked me to come out yesterday. I actually gave him a price on a flat roof in the back. Uh, when I got up there and measured it and looked at it, I noticed um, there was obvious hail marks on the other sides of the roof. So after I gave him the estimate for the flat roof, I mentioned about the hail marks. He was not aware of that. Um, so I told him I'd come back and look at the rest of the roof and see what I could find. So um, that's why I'm out here today. I made some notes, notes up on the roof and uh, let's get up there and I'm going to show you the notes that I made. Well, I put the ladder right here on the front corner. I noticed that there was a bunch of uh, damage here on the caps in the corner. Uh, by the way, this is north, that's east. Um, the direction of the hailstorm March 27th of last year was uh, north by northeast, so pretty much right where that chimney is, it was coming in this way. All right, so it didn't take long to start finding uh, wind-related damage. Looks like something blew up, scarred up all the shingles in this area here. This is a perfect textbook example of, of a hail impact mark. You can see the, the granules that have been punched into the shingle. Uh, same thing here with that one. Look at that. Nice chunk there. Oh, in this area here, I don't know if you can see the depression in the wood. I, I'm not saying it has anything to do with the hail, but it is, it is pretty suspect, pretty soft in this area right here. Hail. The X's. The X's refer to lift up. So once you lose this adhesion between the back of the shingle and the roof itself, it's not gonna, it's not gonna adhere back down. It's just gonna keep flopping, vibrating until it eventually wears and then breaks off. So if I, there's more on the other side. That is conducive with um, um, hail and wind events. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, hinge marks. <clears throat> nice hail impacts here. Bam, more lift up. Typically in a diagonal fashion. Uh, looks like I could have missed those. Oh, super soft in this area here. I'm gonna work around. Still soft down here. Nice chunks taken out of the corner here. NP stands for nail pop. I'm gonna take all pictures of all this stuff and I'm gonna include the uh, Dropbox folder with this video. So Joseph can send it to ins his insurance company. All right. So this is what I would call like perhaps the leading side of uh, from the storm. And then um, on this side, I call it the protected side. Nice macker there. Same. Oh, look at this. Um, sometimes the metals are soft enough where you can see um, when you slide the chalk over it. Impact. Ooh, big one there. Big one there. There. I think this whole section's lifted up. Yeah. Look at that. Just flopping around. Um, oh, look at that one. I just missed one, found one. Grab that. We'll come back and talk about that. Oh, um, the only thing separating you from potentially hurricane force winds is a plastic bubble, an old plastic bubble. I don't even know why it's so submerged like that. Doesn't look right to me. Um, so with your new roof, we're definitely gonna replace this with tempered glass, hurricane rated, Skylight, two by four skylight. Crazy soft in here. Let's come around. Impact, scars, scars. Oh, I can see the impacts from here. Impacts, impacts, nice impact there. And then on the front, Another kind of protected side. Not so much hail, but we do have a significant amount of lift up. See the hinge marks right there? Scars, scars. And then these guys. Whole sections just lifting up. Getting the hinge marks through here. Okay. All right, and then there's more there. I think you get the point. All right, real quick, last um, 
30 seconds. Allow me to talk about how we're gonna replace your roof for you when the time comes. It's just things that we haven't had a chance to talk about yet. I figure this would be helpful. Forgive my obvious metal example here. The top layer is not nearly as important as all the layers underneath. I know you'd want a shingle roof. Uh, imagine this with me. We're gonna remove all the, man, I see a big, big dip over here. Oh yeah. Uh, imagine this with me. We're gonna remove all the shingles, get down to the bare plywood roof. One of the two upgraded building codes, uh, particularly related to hurricanes, is re-nail the plywood to the roof trusses. Okay, a code says every six inches, we're gonna go every four to five inches, we're gonna re-nail every inch of this roof, the plywood to the roof trusses. Uh, waterproof barrier. Every inch of this roof is gonna be installed with, maybe what you've heard of uh, the term peel and stick. The insurance company calls it waterproof barrier. We're gonna cover every inch of this roof with waterproof barrier. Even in the event that, uh, let's just say that whole pull panel system ends up on top of your brand new shingle roof, damages your shingles, it still will not, this waterproof barrier still will not allow the water to get inside your house. Really important. And then we're gonna put your certain teed landmark series shingles uh, on top of that. 99% uh, of all of our roofs are certain teed landmark. That is our shingle. That is the one that we use. We vetted all of them. This is absolutely the best, heaviest, thickest shingle out there for the same price as the other companies. And that's how we're gonna do your roof, okay? So, oh, by the way, I'm not from the insurance company. I'm obviously with Florida Native Roof. Uh, and I'm only out here to, to conclusively prove that there is uh, hail, hail damage, wind damage. And then um, Joseph has to call the insurance company so they can set up an appointment for an adjuster to come out. Thanks.